Bonjour guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to dive in into a unit cheat sheets for dynamics. I have received a lot of requests from you guys to cover dynamics after last week's video where we covered a unit cheat sheet for statics. Now using these cheat sheets can really help you pass your FE exam, so let's get right into it. Oh yeah, everybody now. For those of you guys who don't know me already, my name is Kenza and I've helped so many students pass the FE exam with my online prep courses and free videos. Now last week we covered units for statics. Now if you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend that you guys do that first and then come back to this video because there will be some concepts that I'm going to go over here briefly because I already covered them in depth in the previous video. Also before we get started, don't forget to grab your cheat sheets and make sure that you guys take notes along with me and engage with the material because that's how you are going to remember these concepts for your FE exam. Now to download the cheat sheet, you can sign up in the link in the description below and you should get it in your email right away. Now the first thing we have here is position, which is pretty straightforward. It has the units of length. So for SI, that would be meters. For US, that would be feet. Velocity, it has the units of length per time. Now keep in mind, guys, velocity and speed, they have the same units. So for SI, that would be meters per second. And then for US, that would be feet per second. Now, do you guys know the difference between speed and velocity? If not, and you guys want me to cover it, comment below speed and velocity, and maybe I'll make a video on that next time. Then we have acceleration, which has the units of length per time squared. So for SI, that would be meters per second squared. And then for US, that would be feet per second squared. Now, also what you guys need to keep in mind is the, the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration. Make sure that you guys know that if you are taking your FE exam or if you are taking a dynamics course. Now, let's go over angular motion. So first we have angular position, which has the units of radians. So Radiance is the most common units for angular position. Now, you can also have angular position in terms of revolution or degrees, okay? Now, these units here are a measure of an angle, which means they are going to be the same whether we are using SI units or US units. Now, another thing to keep in mind, guys, is that when you are using angular motion, the most common units is usually radians, whether you're dealing with position, velocity, or acceleration. And so when you are using the angular equations, you have to make sure that every term in your equation has units of radians. And so if you are giving the position in terms of revolution or degrees, you got to make sure that you convert it to radians before you plug it into the equation. And so that's what I'm, we're going to do here. So I'm going to show you guys how to go from revolution or degrees to radians. So to go from revolution to radians, this is how I want you guys to think about it. What is revolution? Well, revolution is one rotation around the circle, right? So then the next question is how many radians do we have in one circle? 2 pi. So one revolution is actually equals to 2 pi. So now if let's say I give you five revolution, so it's going to be easy to convert. So this is how I usually like to do the unit conversion, which I kind of showed you guys a little bit in the units cheat sheets for statics. So I like to write everything down. So here we're going to have revolution because we want to get rid of revolution. And then here we're going to have radians because that's the unit we want. Then we're going to be like, okay, so we have one revolution is equal to two pi radians. And this is how I usually like to convert the units. Now here we're going to have five times two pi radians and keep in mind guys that here when you plug in this in your calculator make sure that you use pi which is 3.14 and don't use 180 degrees because pi could be either 3.14 or 180 degrees but if you plug in 180 degrees you can have units of degrees but we don't want that we want units for radians now let's do the same thing with degrees to radians so here i'm gonna have one degree and then here, we also want to have degrees so that this degree cancels with this degree. And then here, we're going to have radians, which is the unit we want. Now, here, we're going to also have 1 pi radians. And I guess the question now is, how many degrees do we have in 1 pi radians? The answer is 180, right? We have 180 degrees in 1 pi radians. And so this is how we usually convert from degrees to radians. 
Now let's go over angular velocity. So the most common units for angular velocity is radians per second, but it can also be given in revolution per minute. So then the next thing now we're going to do is make sure that you guys know how to convert from revolution per minute to radians per second. Because remember, when you are using the angular equation, if you have position and acceleration in radians, you have to make sure that your angular velocity is also in radians. So let's do that. Now to go from revolution per minute to radians per second, this is how I usually like to do it. So what I'm going to do is write the whole unit down, which means I'm going to write one revolution per minute. This way I can see which units I need to convert. So for example, here I'm going to need to convert revolution to radians, which we kind of already covered, and then we're going to convert minutes to seconds. Now the next thing I like to do is actually write all the units down, which means like here I need to have revolution, so this revolution cancels with this revolution, and then we're going to be left with radians, and I'm going to do the same thing with minutes. So minutes needs to go at the top so that this minute cancels with this, and then second is going to the bottom, and so now we're going to be left with radians per second, which is the unit we want. And now I'm going to use the conversion factors. So one revolution we said is equal to two pi radians. And then in one minute, we have 60 seconds. So to go from revolution per minute to radians per second, we usually multiply by two pi and then we divide by 60. Now, the most common units for angular acceleration is radians per second squared. And remember guys, these units apply for SI and then also US units. Now, before we continue, if you guys are enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to get more videos like this to help you with your FE preparation. Now, let's go over work and energy. Now, work is just force times distance. And if we are using SI units, that would be Newton's meter. Now, also keep in mind, guys, that Newton's meter is the same thing as joules. If we are using US units, work has the unit of pound force foot. Now, last week, we went over the unit cheat sheets for statics, and do you guys remember seeing this unit here, Newton's meter? Why don't you guys pause the video and try not to look at your note and try to remember the variables that we covered and try to remember which of those variables has the units of Newton meter. Did you find it? Did you get it? It's moment, isn't it? Isn't it weird that moment and work has the same units? Does it mean that work and moment are the same thing? Well, Actually, guys, no, they're not. They just happen to have the same units. See, work is equal to force times distance, but the force has to be parallel to the distance, and we usually use that product. Whereas moment, force is perpendicular to the distance, and we usually use cross product. So work and moment, they do have the same units, but they're actually not the same thing. Now let's go over kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do here is grab the equation of kinetic energy and derive the units. And we're going to start with SI units. So the equation is one half mv squared. Now one half, I'm gonna ignore it because it's just a constant and it doesn't really affect our units. Then we have mass, which has the units of kilograms. And then velocity has the units of meters per second. Now don't forget guys to square this because velocity here, here is squared. Now. What I like to do next is rewrite this as kilograms meters per second squared and then times meters. Okay, make sure that you guys time meters because here we have meters squared. Now, why do I like to do this? Well, do you guys remember what this term is? Kilograms meters per second squared. We kind of covered that in the unit chichis for statics. It's Newton, right? So here we're going to have Newton's meter, which is the same thing as joules. So kinetic energy has the units of Newton's meter or joules. Now, the units in SI is going to be pound force foot, but the thing is, if we apply the kinetic energy equation, the units, they don't really add up. Let's go over it together. So we said the equation is one half mv squared. Now, the mass in terms of US units is pound mass, and then velocity is feet per second, and then we're going to square this term. Now, we're going to rewrite it just like we did with SI, so we're going to have pound mass and then foot per second squared, and then we're going to multiply it by foot here. Now, this term here it actually does not equal to pound force. And we covered this already in the unit cheat sheets for statics. And to actually go from this to pound force, we have to use GC. Remember, guys? And GC is 32.2 pound mass and then foot over pound force second squared. Now, if we plug in this GC into this equation, the units are going to add up. Let's do it together. So we're going to have pound mass, and then we're going to have foot per second squared. 
and then here we're going to have foot. And then we're going to divide by GC, which is 32.2 pound mass, and then foot, and then divided by pound force, and then second squared. So now let's cancel the units. We have foot per second squared cancels with this. We have pound mass cancels with this. And then we're going to be left with pound force foot. So then the equation, it's really not this. When we are dealing with US units, the equation for kinetic energy is actually one half mv squared over GC. Make sure that you guys add this to your notes and make sure that you remember it for your FE exam. Now, if you guys want to see an example where we calculate kinetic energy, go ahead and comment kinetic energy below. Next, we have is potential energy. Potential energy includes gravitational energy and elastic energy. Now, these have the units of joules for SI and for US, that would be pound force foot. Now, keep in mind, guys, here that energy and work, they have the same units. Also, what I want you guys to do is go to the reference handbook under dynamics, grab the equation for gravitational and elastic energy, and try to derive the units from the equations just like we did with kinetic energy. And be careful when you are dealing with US units. Now, once you do it, if you're not sure of your answer and you want to check it, just comment potential energy below and I'll make a quick video on it so that way you guys can check your answers. Now, let's go over power. What is power? Well, Power is actually the rate at which work is done, which means it's going to be work over time. Now, the units of work in terms of SI, we said is joules, and then it's going to be per second. And joules per second is also known as watt. Now, for US, well, it's a little bit tricky, of course, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to apply the power equation and then see what we get. So we said the work or units for work using US is pound force foot. Okay, and we're going to divide it by second. Now, the most common units for power is actually horsepower when we are dealing with US units. The thing is, pound force foot per second does not equal to horsepower. So to go from this to horsepower, we actually have to divide by 550. So in the FE exam, if you are asked to give power in terms of horsepower, don't forget to divide by 550 because one horsepower is actually equals to 550 pound force foot per second. So make sure that you guys add this to your cheat sheet and review it before your FE exam. Now, another thing guys to keep in mind is that we can also calculate power using force times velocity. Because if we do that, we said that the units of force is Newton and velocity is meters per second. We also said that Newton's meter is the same thing as joules and joules per second is the same thing as watt, which is the units of power. Okay. All right, let's move on to impulse. So impulse is force times time. So that's going to be Newton's second when using SI. And then for US, that would be pound force second. Now, momentum is just mass times velocity. So in SI, that would be kilograms, meters per second. For US, that would be pound mass and then feet per second. Now, when you guys are dealing with momentum problems, you have to be careful because sometimes you might be giving the weight. And when you are using the momentum equations, you have to use mass. So you're going to have to convert from weight to mass, which we already covered in the unit cheat sheets for static. So make sure that you guys go over that. And then also, if you guys want to see a momentum example, go ahead and comment momentum below. Now let's go over period. So period is the time that it takes for an object to make one complete cycle. And it's time per cycle. So the units would be seconds per cycle, but since cycle is dimensionless, we just don't include it. So it'd be seconds, minutes, hours, days, and so on. And for US, it would be the same thing. Now, frequency is actually the inverse of period. So it would be cycle per time. And so the SI unit would be one per second, which is also known as Hertz. OK, and then for US, it would just be per second. And then lastly, we have mass moment of inertia, which is mass length squared. So in SI units would be kilograms meters squared. And then for US, it would be pound mass and then feet squared. Now, let's talk about options for future videos. I did mention a lot of ideas, so let's go over them. If you want to know the difference between speed and velocity, go ahead and comment speed and velocity below. If you want to see an example where we calculate kinetic energy, go ahead and comment kinetic energy. If you want to see units for potential energy, go ahead and comment potential energy. If you want to see an example on momentum, go ahead and comment momentum. And lastly, something that I haven't discussed yet in this video, which is unit cheat sheets for mechanics of materials. If you guys are interested, go ahead and comment mechanics of materials below. If you want to see all of these videos, go ahead and comment all below. And the idea that gets most comments will win.
If you're currently studying for your FE exam or you're planning to start studying for the FE, make sure that you guys enroll in our free masterclass today and learn the exact three steps to pass your FE exam. Now, while you guys wait for the next video, make sure that you guys check out these two videos that I have here as well, which will help you with your FE preparation. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you on the next video. À la prochaine. Oh yeah,